Welcome to Daron Yoga, everyone. Today we're going to work on yoga for the hamstrings and the legs in general because it's really hard to isolate one thing. Um, very much needed. If you're like me, I grew up in Jerusalem, rode my bicycle, walked everywhere. They become ham chains. And in regular yoga classes, holding stuff for a second or two, it's really great, but not always as efficient as we would like to really get into it. So this is an amazing practice that I offer and recommend you do often, especially if your legs are on the tight side, okay? Just stay with the breath. That's the only most important thing. There'll be moments that are challenging, but all in all, it'll be over before you know it. So here we go. We're going to start standing. So come up to standing, please. I'm going to start warming up the legs a bit here. So either knee bent, circles with the right leg. If this is feeling already somewhat easy, can work on straightening the legs. It'll probably be still knee bent, especially if your hamstrings are a bit tight. This goes for everything we do today. Keep the knee bent as much as needed. And stop and reverse direction. Great for balancing. Keep the belly tucked in and invite the breath to join. Relax, let's do the second leg. Maintain the breath. Beautiful, reverse. What to do? The hips are connected to the hamstrings. They need some warm up too. Relax, shake it away. Some hip circles. So this class will go through all the motions. It's not an isolated hamstring, the other direction, but it's a hamstring emphasis. Make sure you keep it yoga. Make sure you keep it zen. They're keeping the mind steady. Relax. Wave. They're keeping the gaze steady. And by maintaining the ujjayi breath all the while. Relax, shoulders. forward. Good. Both arms together. If you can, open close your hands while you're doing it. Reverse. your speed. Reverse. If I shake it away. Oh, maybe ankles and knees. Forgot those. Reverse. Let's start with a bit of sun salutes, warm-ups really. So feet together, top of the mat, take a breath, maybe close your eyes. Inhale, arms up over the head. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen, look forward. Exhale, step the right foot back, gaze forward. Step the left foot back. Exhale, lower chaturanga. It's okay to use the knees. Inhale, upwards. Stay for a few breaths. Let's warm up the back. And downward dog. Okay. 
Uh, for you with hamstrings that are tight, you'll always be able to do it with bent knees. But for now, bend one knee at a time. Again, waking up. And for some, it feels more in the calves than the hamstring. Totally, totally fine. Beautiful. Take the right leg up behind you. Exhale, bring the knee to the nose. Inhale, leg back. Exhale, right knee across. Inhale, back. Exhale, over to the right side. Inhale, back. And bring the right foot between the hands. Lower the left knee down. Low lunge. This doesn't go to the hamstring, but it goes to the psoas the front of the left leg. For example, when we try to do the splits pose, the Hanuman pose, if we don't have the psoas open, it will affect because like almost every pose, it's never one isolated muscle, which is good because we are a combination of a lot of muscles creating one body. And so we want to always warm up more than just one little area. Unless you're doing a yin class specific for this, hopefully after you've had some warm-up in your day. Maybe if you want, take it a little deeper, sink a little lower into your hips. See if you can still hear your breath. Beautiful. Hands come down to the ground. And step it forward, lengthen the spine, and exhale forward full. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms over the head. Exhale, samastiti. Inhale, arms up over the head. Exhale, forward fold. Again, if the hamstrings are tight, bend the knees. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, left foot back. Inhale, right foot back. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. Left leg up. Exhale, knee to the nose. Inhale, back. Exhale, across. Inhale. Exhale, over to the left. Inhale. And low lunge. If you ever need to, you can use your left hand to help the foot to come forward. And the hips low down as much as possible. Belly tucks in, chest lifts. Finding softness. Softness in the eyes, softness in the mind. As you follow your deepening of the exhales, maybe you find more ease in the mind. Consciously, hands come down to the ground. Bring the right foot forward. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise. All the way up. If you want a little back bend, warm up the back. Exhale, close the pose. Sun salute A. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, Dway, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Another note for those of us with little tighter hamstrings. You can shorten your stance and bring the feet closer to the hands. However, if you start feeling a big stretch there, go back, lengthen it. It's not about getting the heels down, it's working in that direction. And if while you're working in that direction, you can feel the back of the legs singing hula mula balabula you're doing it right exhale 
Gaze forward, shoulders forward, jump, lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, inhale, right into Utkatasana. Hold for three, two, one. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward. Exhale, downward. Right foot, warrior one. Come up and stay, please. Bend the right knee. Take a moment. Starting with a twist. Twist to the right. Optional left arm up for a back bend. Optional stay as you are. Arms up, warrior. Exhale, chaturanga. Little extra movement at first to really warm up. Left foot warrior. Slow and steady, watching the hands, staying present. Take a breath. And then twist. If you've taken the back bend on the first side, take it on the second. Back up, warrior. Exhale consciously, hands down. Step it back. Lower, you can use the knees if needed. Inhale. Exhale. Right foot, warrior one. A little bit for the hips, hands to the heart. The hands clasp behind the back. Or a strap, right foot moves to the right. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, forward folding. Breathing. Inhale, rise. Keep the hands clasped behind the back. Bring the right foot a little forward, a little shorter. Lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. You may want to keep the hands at the heart if it's too much with the hands behind the back. Otherwise, just warming up here. Oh yeah, hello, hamstrings. Keep the knee as bent as needed. We're still just warming up. Inhale, back up. Arms overhead. And exhale, hands back down to the ground. Step it back, follow your breath and your vinyasa. Inhale, forehead is relaxed. Exhale. Same thing on the left side, left foot forward, right heel down. Inhale, reach the arms forward, come up, slow and steady, vira patras. Hands lower to the heart. Strap or not, left foot to the left. Hands behind the back. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to fold. Maintain the breath. Inhale, rise back up. Oh, keep the strap or the hands, shorten a bit the stance. Straighten the front leg. Elongate. Exhale, hello. Howdy, hamstrings. I love you, hamstrings. Sometimes when we practice these poses and something feels tight, we end up having some ill thoughts, ill wishes, complaints. And really remember, this is part of you. The more you can be happy, grateful. Hey, we're working together to free you. I love you, my hamstrings. Inhale, back up. 
exhale, hands down. Just maintaining that positiveness, the gratitude. The more we do that, the quicker we release. It's like a mother hugging the kid as they do some silly things, telling them it'll be all right. No need to yell, but yes, need to practice. Go look between the hands, jump forward, lengthen the spine. Stay halfway, take the feet about hip width apart, forward fold. By all means, you can start with knees bent. Just hold the elbows for now. Let the head go. If it's easy enough, shift the weight forward towards the balls of the feet, towards the toes. If it's easy, straighten more the legs. If you're shaking like crazy, bend the knees a bit. The nice thing about bending the knees is that you go quicker, you go into the belly of the muscle, there's more room to stretch. Once that is stretched, then you have to straighten because that otherwise you won't feel much of a stretch. Okay. Most of us will stay here if your hamstrings are pretty open. You can take the hands behind the legs, the arms, and then reach the hands through and hold the front of the shins. Obviously, no matter how open your hamstrings are, there's always great benefit in doing this practice. Release the hands. Bend the knees a lot. Roll up like a wave. Knees, hips, chest, head last. Oof. Shake the legs a little bit. Good job, everybody. Okay, we're going to open the right foot to the right side for Prasarita. Feet are parallel. Let's start with A, please. So we'll take the hands on the hips. Inhale. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Bring the hands to the ground. Lengthen one more time. Look forward. And then take the hands further back behind you as you lower the head. Walk the hands as much as they're willing to go. back to A position, inhale, lengthen, exhale, hands to the hips, inhale, rise all the way up, we're going to take C, one more time, strap or not, we get a lot of shoulders while we're doing this leg work, clasp the hands or the strap, inhale, lengthen, as you forward fold, the shoulders add a little extra weight, making it a little more intense, for those of us that have it too easy and the head is on the ground, narrow your legs a little bit, narrow your stance. Sometimes it's simply a matter of the length of different body parts. We don't all have the same proportions. challenging you can take it a little wider don't go too wide and you can always bend the knees a bit but don't go again too far bending you still want to feel the legs belly tucks in almost over take the head over to the right leg Center, over to the left leg. C, 
center. Slowly make your way all the way up. No stopping in the middle. Release your strap if you have it. Come to the front. Oof, shake it away. Feeling it, huh? At least I do. Hopefully you do too. Okay. And take the hands behind the back if you can. Take the reverse namaste. If you cannot, just hold the elbows. Step the right foot back behind you. Adjust the hips to the front. Elongate the spine. And exhale, forward fold. We've done this, a little different variation this time. So if you can wiggle the hands a little higher up the back, palms a little closer together. Inhale, rise all the way up. But we're going to step the right knee forward into the air and try to straighten the right leg. If it's too much, keep it bent, but ideally straighten even if it's just an inch off the ground. Pointing the toes, if you like, will make it a little easier. Lift a little higher. Release. And step the left foot back. Adjust the hips to the front. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, forward fold. Maintain the breath. Inhale, rise. Focus your gaze, left knee forward. Straighten, breathe. Release. Cool, shake it away. You guys are doing great. Okay, I'm going to take here a sun salute and meet in downward dog. So inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Jump back. Inhale. And exhale. Take two, three breaths here. Just do a quickie quickie on the belly. So coming forward to plank, lower down to the belly. We'll take just two things. So first lift the chest, lift the legs. Clasp the hands behind, lift up. Either stay here or arms forward, your choice. This will be more intense on the back. Rest. So we are doing some stuff that's not legs to just really make sure it is an all-around round practice. We'll go for some quads, actually. So bend the right knee, left elbow underneath, left shoulder. Reach the right foot forward. I always believe in balance. believe in just stretching one thing all together. Yes, emphasizing. Not forgetting the rest. For those of you that this is super easy and the foot is touching the ground, you can come up onto the left elbow up on the left hand. If your hand, if your foot wasn't touching the ground and you felt your quad, really no need for this. Where we're gonna switch. Easy side. Don't get upset if it's not easy side for you, it's a joke. For some, one side is easier than the other. This happens for most of us. For me, this really is easier than the other side, but it's not always the case for everybody. 
should always remember this within our practices. We're all very different, even within ourselves, from one side to another, let alone from one another. Or on different days or different times of the year. And so we have to show up with the Zen mind, knowing this is what is, this moment, this present. That's all we can do. Deal with what's happening right now, as it is. Release one up into bow pose. Take the feet, or if not, repeat Jalabhasana. Press the legs away. Relax the forehead. Release down. Either a sphinx, a cobra, or an upward dog. Take two, three breaths. If you're like, I need a break, take child's pose. into Downward Dog. And to the moment we've all been waiting for, right foot forward, left knee down. Sinking into low lunge one more time. If you want a low lunge deluxe, bend the back knee. Give it a little extra just for two, three breaths. Really warming up the back leg. So there's about a million things we can do for hamstrings, and we'll do some stuff that may even appear lighter, like laying on the back. But I find that Hanuman, release the back leg, straight in the front, we'll start with half, Arda Hanuman, is really one of the most efficient ones. And after years of practice, when my hamstrings did not show any signs of wanting to go deeper, I realized I have to get into Hanuman, even though in some classes in Ashtanga it was considered an advanced pose. And I had to hold it longer. And so at home I used to use an hourglass for three minutes at a time. If you want, stay here. If there's room to glide forward, glide. We'll do this more than once, so no need to go to your max. Go to the place where you can feel like some spice, but not like you're burning and running for the water. And so I realized that only when I repeated this twice at least, sometimes three times, three minutes at a time, and I did it a few times a week, wow, what progress. And then it's not only about how long we do it, but it's the state of mind we're in. Are we fidgeting? Are we suffering right now? Or are we in a state of gratitude, or better yet, even in a state of emptiness? Just deep exhales. And with every exhale, there's a feeling of relaxation, of softening, which sometimes helps us go deeper, sometimes helps us just remain without running away, though it is intense. And so really find the softness. You're welcome to close the eyes. But if that gets you like thinking about a million things, open the eyes and focus in one spot. Really listen to your breath. When you do this at home without me, if you ever do it, you can count the breath. Or you can just always stay with me, I'll do it for you. Scan your face as it relaxed. Shaking is normal, just stay with it. It's worth it, believe me. Last few. I'm shaking, it's a little cool here in the morning. Haven't practiced this enough recently. So it's not like we're coming here all super ninjas. We're coming here as real people with our own struggles. And that's what's real. That should be your practice. Make it real. 
Almost there, last two breaths. Slowly, now coming out sometimes is as challenging as being in the pose. We're just gonna come to the hands and knees. Take a few circles with the right leg, especially straighten it behind you. And really reach it back and then around, releasing a bit, going in the opposite direction as well. Take a vinyasa. We're meeting downward dog. Hmm. Take a moment. Maybe you already feel a bit of difference between right leg and left leg. It's a democracy here. If you want to skip the left side, you can stay in child's pose or downward dog. Otherwise, join us. Left foot forward, right knee down. Starting with the low lunge. Low lunge or low lunge deluxe. Bending the back knee optional. Just a few breaths. Deeper into this, into the psoas. The front muscles of the right leg. Beautiful, maybe you felt it in your quads as well. Half out of down, why not learn some Sanskrit on the way? Hanumanasana. All right. Breathing, sending love to your hamstrings. a bit in the shoulders, straightening if there's room or just sliding forward. Remember, it's okay to have the knee bent. I forgot to mention, you can have blocks underneath your hands if your hands don't reach the ground. Really breathing into it. How calm can your face be? Can your eyes? Really, nothing is very much working right now. It's mostly surrendering into the pose. Allowing gravity and your body weight to do the work. I'm using my arms just a little bit to prevent me from going too deep. If you can feel the light between the eyebrows. By the way, if it's too easy for anybody, work on squaring your hips further. And I've got them a little cheating. If it will be all the way to the ground, I'll work on straight, straight squaring more. If you're all the way down and it's easy, you can take the arms up to the sky. If all that's easy, you can put a block underneath your left heel. Just make sure you're not overdoing it. If it's that easy, I would say go for a run. Work on strengthening your muscles. Because the truth is we want to be balanced. We want to be flexible, but there's no need to become a Cirque du Soleil ultra bendy too much thing because sometimes we don't know what happens with these lovely people when they grow older and sometimes there are actually consequences for it going too far. So we want to be able to do a good Hanuman one day, this life or next, but we also want to keep the legs strong enough to keep it balanced. We're almost there. guys are doing really wonderful. Let's slowly release. Again, coming to all fours. Gonna slowly just straighten the back leg and then go ahead and do some circles while straightening. Should feel kind of nice. Good release. Other direction. Beautiful. 
for vinyasa. It's good to stay warm. Take two breaths in downward dog, two, three breaths. Feel the beauty, see how it feels in your legs right now. See if thanks to this you can find a little more space in your back and shoulders. Okay, with no further ado, right foot forward. I was almost thinking of letting you get away without it. But no, we're going to go right away. Half Hanuman for one, two breaths. And stay or slide. You may already see that on the second time you can start a little deeper. Or maybe it's just a little less intense. And even if it's the same intensity, that's fine. I guarantee you there's progress. And it's the repeat, the repeat, the practice, the abhyasa. Patanjali, for those that don't know, wrote the Yoga Sutras. What's yoga all about? It's about controlling the mind. And he says it's the repeated practice, the constant practice over and over again. It's not showing up once every two weeks. It's showing up every day and wherever you are, learning to deal with it. It's not about being a Zen master the first day. It's about recognizing, having the awareness. What is it that's happening right now at this very moment? As you're here, can you really be so present? And you don't have to be fully present with the sensation. Let's not call it names we don't like. You could be fully present with your breath. And that will dim the experience of the legs. Almost there. We'll hold this a little shorter than the other side. Than the other first round, that is. Let's release. Gently coming out. Let's do one more time. Circles this time, maybe in downward dog. So come to downward dog and do the circles. Other direction. Okay. Relax the leg down. Vinyasa. Left leg forward, left foot forward, right knee down. Straightening the left leg. And again, stay here. Maybe you're staying in Narada Hanumanasana the whole time in the half Hanuman. You don't have to slide if it's not happening. For those of you doing this practice with us on the 20th time, you know, right? Some days you're doing less, some days more. And the progress is not always just in one direction. Sometimes you have three good days, one so-so. You smile, you stay present, and then you work on deepening. Oh, Hanuman. What about Hanuman? Hopefully you're okay with me distracting you a bit. Hanuman was this lovely guy that leaped over from the south tip of India to Sri Lanka to save a lovely woman. And this is for you quiz people. What's the difference between Hanuman jumping and saving the beautiful woman and between most Hanuman stars? I'll give you a hint. It's not the fact that he's a monkey. It's the fact that he went to save the woman for his master, for a teacher, for Rama, not for his own good. He was not selfish in doing that. He was doing that really for the benefit of others. And so for me, Hanuman repre represents the leaping over challenges, right? The challenge of right now, dealing with the discomfort. Any challenge in life, 
it's so easy to run away from it, to say, oh, I can't, oh, too much. But even if you have to practice for the rest of your life on whatever it is that's challenging, it's worth it. It's the practice that counts, more so than even the results. The practice has become the result. Stay with the breath. Gently, gently releasing. And then we're going to do the leg circles in downward dog this time. So making your way to downward dog. Reverse. Beautiful. Let's take a vinyasa. Take a few breaths, let it calm. Let's all look between the hands and step or jump through to our seat. We're gonna lower down very slowly to our backs. We're going to do a little more hamstring stretch, so we're going to take the right leg up. And either you can hold the strap around the foot or belt. If you can reach the toe with your peace sign finger, amazing. Some of you will even hold the foot, and the more I flex it, the more intense it is. Stay for a moment. If this is intense enough, stay here. If you need more, straighten the left leg down onto the mat. Again, if you decide you've made a mistake, bend it back. We're going to do a little bit of work here to kind of actually release the hamstrings. So we're going to start with inhaling and pressing the leg away from you, really activating the leg. Press, 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 press. And as you exhale, surrender. Let it come towards your face. Inhale. Activate the leg. Activate the muscles. Press it away from you. And exhale two, closer to you. Inhale, activate, press. Exhale, three, closer to the face. Inhale, away from the face, press. Work the leg. Exhale, to the face. One last one, just for good measure. Press, 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 press. And then hold. Stay here. Again, a little micro bend in the knee is totally, totally cool. A lot of bending if you still feel the hamstrings is perfectly fine. If it's getting easy, you can even bring both hands to the foot or one hand to the foot, one hand to the left leg to hold the left leg down if it wants to move and rise. And then surrender, right? Every exhale, you feel the leg coming just a bit towards you. Staying in calm and peace. So, in general, this is considered a much more basic pose than Hanuman. But I still like Hanuman first because of the weight and gravity pushing me down there. I'm still far from bringing my toes over the head to the ground here. And so, even though that one may seem like an advanced pose, this one has quite a far way where we can still go. And it's not as easy as it may seem, just because we're on the backs chilling out. I can definitely feel my legs right now singing hallelujah. You can leave me in the comments which song came to your mind when I said that. And then that's fine, right? It's totally normal that something will jump up. And then see how quickly you can let that song go and come back to just listening to your Ujjayi breath. That is the Zen mind.
Beautiful. Release the right leg. I'm going to place both feet on the ground, knees up, and move open, close the knees. I don't know. That's what feels good for me. But honestly, you can go windshield wipers. You can go anything that really feels a good release. And with no further ado, I'm going to switch sides. Left leg up. Again, right knee may be up. Maybe, maybe you're straightening the right leg. See if that feels right for you. Try to work on straightening the left leg. Probably at first it's a little bent. That's totally fine. And here we go. As you inhale, press the heel away from your face. Straighten the leg as much as you can. And exhale, relax everything. Inhale, work. Power the leg. Push it away from you. Exhale, towards the face. Inhale, power. Exhale, relax. Inhale, power. Exhale, relax. Last one. Inhale, activate. Exhale, surrender completely. Well, kind of. I'm not in Shavasana, but I'm not really doing that much work. Staying with awareness on the breath. Beautiful release. Move the knees a bit in whatever way feels good for you, the legs in whatever way feels good for you. So we've done plenty of hamstrings, but you know me, I like a rounded clasp. So let's just do a couple of back bends. We can't go with anything. So you can lift up to a bridge if you like. And that's perfectly awesome. And stay here for a few breaths. If it's in your practice, you can lift up to the upward bow, Udva Danyurasana. Main thing is, smile, you never know when there's a camera on your face. You never know when this is the last breath. Maintaining good vibes is super crucial for a healthy life. Maintaining the breath. And you can lower down, take a break. If you don't need a break, you can walk the hands towards the feet. If you're in bridge, you can maybe stay up. Your choice, again, listening to your body. You're doing back bends, that's the one important thing. If you've taken a break, please come up. Okay, let's all lower down. Bring the knees to the chest. Roll a bit from side to side. Then roll forward and back. Come up to sit. And do a few. Let's do a little twist and then forward fold. So. Right knee bending, left leg straight, twisting over to the right. If you find that your back is rounding plenty, please sit on a block. Beautiful. We're going to switch sides. Marichi Asana C. Or variations of it.
back to center. Let's skip the vinyasa. We'll take the left leg straight. Bend the right foot into the left thigh. Janu Shurshasana A. Again, staying on the block. And this can be very different experience than the Hanuman because we're involving the back in this one. Belly in, chest forward, forward, forward. This gets, again, if it's challenging, bend the knee. If it's easy, flex the left foot more. It's called Aichiwawa variation. At times when I feel like I even need more, I bring my head, my right cheek to the outside of the left leg and that really for me is, uh, gets nice and spicy. If we lift the chest up, we're gonna stay on the same leg. We're gonna bring the right ankle right behind the knee, slightly different than the Ashtanga half lotus. So I'm flexing my right foot, not crucial, but definitely crucial for me with the knee injury. And then starting to come forward. This will kind of press on the leg, forcing it to be a little more straight than normal. So easy, easy. If this is too much for you, please stay with the first variations we've done. That was good enough. Um, we call this one the Kung Fu Ninja. And so don't yell at me if you're a Kung Fu master and don't want to be associated with ninja or vice versa, please. It's just for fun, hopefully to get you to smile. Names are nothing. They really do not matter so much. Remember, it's the practice, it's the present. It's the thing itself that matters, not what we call it. Duron Yoga, Ashtanga, Vinyasa, all just labels. If you practice, you can call it whatever you like. Jennifer Yoga is fine too. Try not to come up with names now, but just relax into the exhale. Come up. If you want, take a vinyasa. If not, we're just going to go for the second side. Right leg straight, left foot into the right thigh for Janushurshasana, staying calm and forward folding. We have plenty of classes like the morning flow and the yoga stenics that can get your heartbeat up. This one we're really focusing on the hamstrings. A uh, little less vinyasas is perfectly okay some days. Uh, we want to stay as calm as can be. to allow the muscles to relax and the mind and the muscles and the body very much are connected very much affect each other coming up again going for Kung Fu variation or not. Remember, you can stay in Janu Shushasana. So it's not half lotus, it's behind the knee. Flexing a bit in the foot, elongating and coming down just as much as is reasonable for you. All right, the misconception of yoga is that yoga is union, which is true. But then people imagine that it's about uniting body and mind which in my opinion are way too united anyway. That's why I have stomach aches because I'm stressed. Stress that comes from my mind affects my body. Or when I'm not feeling great, I have a hard time concentrating. Right? They're very, very united. Maybe the first thing we need to do is to actually separate them, to control the mind or use them right now together to feel how the intensity is not affecting my mind so that eventually the union has nothing to do with my body, but actually it's the union, it's the dropping away from my personal, mental fluctuations, afflictions, thoughts, into a universal consciousness.
nice everybody. Come up, bring the legs up, shake them away a little bit. We're almost done, we're almost done. We'll go for Paschimottanasana, so both legs forward. And it's important because hamstrings involve a lot of forward pull, that's why we threw in some back bends. We want to let you go home balanced. <laughs> Maybe you're already home, but leave the practice balanced. Surrender wherever it may be. I can let you do here shoulder stand, head stands, or you can actually close the practice. So I'm going to allow you to do the inversions on your own. We're going to take a little uh, inversion, not a long one. We're going to take shoulder stand, and, uh, and then we'll come down for Shavasana, okay? So join us. It won't be too long. Lower down to your backs. Lift up. And try to take the legs as high up as possible. Roll the shoulders under. Take a moment to just let the blood flow. It's important to have an inversion in class. Keep the left leg up. Take the right leg over the head. If it's easy, even pull the left leg away. Almost like you're doing the splits here again. If you do this every day, you'll notice today you're going further than normal. Inhale, back up. Exhale, switch legs. Inhale, back up. Exhale, take the legs wide apart. up. Exhale, legs over the head, which does involve hamstring. This is just like Paschimottanasana. Hands may be on the mat if possible. Clasp the fingers. If not, keep them on the back. Bend the knees towards the ears. Slowly begin to lower down, hands on the mat, feel the spine reaching down, then the hips, and slowly the legs come down. Once the legs are down, prop up onto your elbows, lift up the chest, take the head back onto the ground, fish, or maybe fish variation, legs up, arms up. down to the ground, hug the knees into the chest, and lower for a short Shavasana, straighten the legs, maybe give yourself permission to lower down fully, to surrender completely, you can even shake your feet for a moment, feel the legs and all the muscles relax totally, the back, shoulders, chest. Oof, the face drops away. And you are free.
feel free to stay longer in Shavasana if you need it. Otherwise, join us as we come out. Bring the knees again into the chest, a little hug. Rolling back and forth, we come up to sit. Sitting in any cross-legged, comfortable, semi-comfortable position for you. We'll do a hip one as well, so you can sit comfortably. Close your eyes and fill up with gratitude for your hamstrings, for your legs. We sometimes take them for granted. We want them to work so we can run and play sports. But we forget that we need to balance them with some stretching. And even simply just sitting, walking, all those things require these lovely legs to work or to tighten. So I hope you really enjoyed this class. If you feel the gratitude within you, please leave us a message, leave us a comment below. It really warms my heart to read them. If you have questions, ask me. I promise a lot more to come, so subscribe so you won't miss. We'll go through all different body parts. I thank you deeply, hands to the heart thanking ourselves, thanking the teachers in front of you and generations back that passed on this information to all of us. Hopefully see you at Doron Yoga and Zen Center or at Doron Yoga on the web. Namaste.